Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Bull, Manager of Developer Advocacy. I'm Mohammed Imam, Senior Director, Product Management of Catalyst 9000, as well as uh, the Technical Marketing Team. Mohammed, it's really good to have you here. I, I appreciate you taking my the pleasure. time. My um, pleasure. It's my first time overseas, which is kind of cool here, especially being in the DevNet zone. But I've, I've never traveled this way for, uh, for any reason. Uh, so I'm really enjoying being in Amsterdam. And something I noticed about, we were talking about this a bit ahead of time. I noticed here this year, and it's becoming more prevalent for Cisco, is not just sustainability, but the idea of how can we manage our own business to have a less impact on the planet in general. And we were talking a bit about campus networks and what that sort of concept can mean for network engineers. And I'm really curious, from your perspective, especially on the Catalyst side, everybody uses switches. That's not going away anytime soon. How, how do you and how, do, how does our organization see what you can do to impact sustainability and to help uh, other businesses with their goals to have less impact on the planet? That's an awesome question because as I talk to a lot of customers, what I'm finding out that almost all bigger enterprises have their sustainability goals already defined and they would like to get to their sustainability goals in the next 10, 15, 20 years. Which means they have to work a lot of things in, in, these, in these years. And I think networks is really sitting in a place where it can be the catalyst for this transformation. Um, one of the things that, that we see uh, as, we, as we go in the next few years from network perspective is the use of efficient energy through the networks. And what I mean by that is the network today is giving our customers power over Ethernet or PoE. PoE used to be mostly used for wireless access points, right, 15, 30 watts. But if a couple of years back we have a standardized 90 watt on PoE, which means now we have a much bigger ecosystem that can get connected to the 90 watt or PoE power, right? Which is an efficient way to deliver power in a DC form factor. Um, and it, is also, it also results into cost savings for our customers. And so what we really see here, PoE is one of the factors that is going to help our customers get to energy saving and energy optimizations. Second, one of the things that is happening in the industry um, today is class four circuits. This is new. Um, it's less in Europe at the moment, more in Americas. That's where it's ratified. Um, but what it means is that now we can go to much higher voltage of DC in a touch safe environment. So until now, you can, you know, you can get up to 100 watt right? Um, and low voltages of DC that is touch safe. Now technology has taken it to 450 volt touch safe, right? So I think what it, what it delivers from energy saving and optimization and sustainability goals perspective is it delivers power in an efficient way, right? And so what we see here is going forward, the networking devices, if they start to get powered by the high voltage DC, that will contribute to energy savings as well. And third, and perhaps the most um, interesting one is the visibility-driven energy savings. The more visibility that we have in our environments, in the campuses, enterprise, healthcare, manufacturing plants, the more venues we have to save on energy. If you don't know how energy is being consumed, we don't know, you know where we can save the energy. If we have the occupancy data, if we have the energy consumption data available for us, then we can drive decisions, better decisions on how we are going to save uh, on energy through various tools. And Cisco is in a very good position for that because we have Catalyst 9000, for example, switches as well as access points that can give you that telemetry and data um, for the workspaces in different tools, for example, in Cisco spaces, mm -hmm. it can take that data and tell you how the occupancy looks like in, in a working, uh, in a, in a workspace, for example, right? And that really helps make the decision. You can turn down the HVAC system, the lighting, 
when there is nobody mm -hmm. in the in the building, for example, or you can turn it on when there is somebody shows up, right? And so that's, I think those are the three areas: PoE, Class Four, and visibility of energy savings. I think that's that's something that is going to drive um, a lot of energy uh, optimization for our customers, and hopefully that gets them to the sustainability goals. It's really interesting to hear, um, and it's, you know, we don't often talk about power consumption as the, when I was still in sales here at Cisco before I joined DevNet, it, you know, we, as SEs, we would talk a lot about, you know, these are the features of these devices that we sell that are really important to them because that's what they need. That's a feature that they needed to have for whatever design they're putting out. But we don't often talk about why power is a good example, why that is such an important thing to understand. So not, you know, not just from the sustainability perspective, but I, uh, I like the idea or what you brought up about business decisions that can be made when you understand this. So I'm kind of curious for, uh, in some of the use cases and customers you've been working with or talking to and partners that you're looking to help deploy this stuff with, um, how are they consuming that information? You know, you mentioned Cisco Spaces, but is everyone using that sort of tooling? And how are, they, when they are consuming that data, um, could you maybe give us an example of a use case um, I don't have to mention any names, but a use case where like someone's actually taking that data, what tooling they're, they're choosing to use, maybe why they're choosing that, and what that's doing for them. Yeah, we have many actually real world examples today. Um, Pen1 Plaza in New York, which is our, uh, where we have our Cisco office as well, we are using Cisco Spaces, and Cisco Spaces is getting all the data and telemetry from the network across the building. And that's one of our uh, examples of uh, a smart building that we have. We also have an office in Singapore, um, and there are many other projects that we, are, that we are working on. But the data that we are, we are collecting today is through, for example, wireless access points, and where, the, where we detect that there are users on the access points attached, we use that data for occupancy. And based on that, Cisco Spaces can give you the visibility, mm -hmm. But Cisco Spaces has this power that it can expose APIs to the third party, and different building management systems can use that data to take the actions, right? Okay. Um, we also have various features in Cisco DNA Center, um, which is our controller, um, to look at the energy and then control certain parts of that, and we are working on, on some of those as well. That's very cool. Now, I would be remiss to, if I didn't ask this next question. So, it's really cool to hear that, you know, from Cisco Spaces and DNA Center, which we've talked about a lot, um, you can get this data, you can consume it. I like the building, uh, the building uh, technologies, and I can imagine things like, not just lighting, but smart blinds and things like that, conference rooms that can be adjusted automatically based off of that. But we're in the DevNet zone. So I'm very curious, from a developer perspective, APIs, that sort of thing, if somebody, if a customer is maybe using these DNA Center Cisco Spaces, or maybe they're not there yet, but they do have some other systems and tooling that they would like to leverage, um, are they able to do that? Like, are you, are we seeing adoption of and use of other tools as well to accomplish some of these same, you know, data uh, telemetry feeds and decision making? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, so. We have our own tools, mm -hmm. right? So uh, our customers can use uh, these available tools like Cisco DNA Center, Cisco Spaces. But we know that there are customers who are going to do DIY, right? right? They, they, they want to be flexible, uh, they like to do it their own way. And, and if a customer wants to do that, we have a rich set of Yang models available on the Catalyst 9000 switches. Um, and we support the standardized, uh, the standard-based uh, protocols, RESConf, NetConf, and GNMI. Um, RESConf is obviously, you know, very widely adopted uh, for various use cases. Um, so some of our customers wants to use ResConf for their networks as well. Uh, NetConf, obviously, that's built for the networks and it's very good protocol for Cisco and Cisco and for device management and configuration. And then GNMI is rather new, mm -hmm. um, but it gives, um, uh, it, it has some new features uh, like uh, model-driven telemetry um, as well. So. With these tools, our customers can really do what they want using our models that are, that's available on, on, the, on the Catalyst 9K switches. You know, I really appreciate hearing all the details there because one of the things we notice when 
when courses, like classrooms are filling up here and workshops, and you know, we want to talk about the things that Cisco has available because a lot of customers use them, and we would like them to use them more. We also rec we have we all recognize that not every company is going to want to use the same sort of technologies and the same sort of tooling. And so I really appreciate hearing that there's a lot of flexibility in how any customer can consume that information because any graphical interface or things that we do create as a, as a business for our customers to use will work to a point, but there's always a place where that customer's going to make a decision that says, look, some of this is going to work great for us, but we have these other things that that just isn't the right use case, and these other tooling, these other platforms fit our use case, and so I, I really appreciate hearing, I'm sure many people are watching, appreciate hearing that there's a lot of flexibility in how they can leverage, you know, not just managing and operating, but also consuming the information that's coming out of it. Absolutely. So, um, in the past, we used to have Yang Explorer mm -hmm. that has been available for, for, for a while. Um, but recently, we have uh, launched what we call Yang Suite. Yang Suite has been an internal Cisco tool for the last five, six years. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have made it available now for our customers uh, free of charge. And that means you can use that tool. It supports the RESTConf, NETCONF, NetConf and GNMI. Um, and it can easily, you know, it has the UI where you can drag and drop different configurations that you like, and it can generate the code for Ansible or for Python. And from there, you can take that code and use it in whatever tools you like. Um, so that's a powerful tool, I believe, uh, that a lot of customers would like to use uh, who want to do it DIY. You know what, I'm, I'm so glad that you brought that specific as aspect of, of how, what Yang Suite can actually do for anybody. We've noticed in multiple sessions, actually I was talking to a couple of developer advocates earlier, realizing that as they're presenting to people, how many people still coming in have not quite started their automation journey. They're still, they're in the beginning trying to figure out where do I begin? And having tools like Yang Suite available that says, no, we're going to try to make this as easy as we can for you to solve a problem right now. We can worry about learning the code and all those things later on. For now, what can we solve for you right this minute? So I really, I really appreciate hearing that. I know a lot of people will. Um, speaking of telemetry and speaking of data and interaction, I, I think it would be a good thing to talk about um, how do we make sure that stuff stays secure? Because we've been hearing a lot in the news and other places lately that um, security is kind of a big deal. And especially now that we're, you know, ChatGPT and others are making data and all this stuff very accessible, everyone's a little bit worried about privacy and protecting that, as they should be. So with all this telemetry and information that's coming out of these platforms, how can um, customers and even partners enable them to keep that secure and protected for their businesses? But security is something that we always um, think about when we are developing our next generation products and our software releases. And so we are bringing various solutions for, solutions for our customers. One of the recent things that we have introduced is um, IPsec on Catalyst 9300 and 9400 switches. Um, and that means now you can do point-to-point -point layer three tunnels, secure tunnels, um, for various different use cases, right? Um, it can be a branch use case, and within a campus, although the implementation and deployment might be uh, limited, but it gives you another way to secure um, a set of data mm -hmm. that you really want to be secured in a tunnel uh, at layer three which was not there in the past in the campus products, right? We always had MaxSec, we still continue to have MaxSec, which is an L2 protocol to secure point-to-point. Uh, -point. Mm -hmm. But now you can go, it is not limited to point-to-point, -point. you can go from one point to multiple hops away and, and, and establish a uh, tunnel. And the beauty of that is because it's happening in the ASIC, you don't have any performance limitations. That's good. And it can go up to 100 gig of encrypted traffic. That's perfect. Well, this has been fascinating. I really appreciate it. Uh, before we wrap up, though, um, I wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of share with the audience um, anything that like, you really want them to take away from this session, any key points you really want them to know about, and anything that you'd like them to go do afterwards. Yeah, one of the things, really, we, that, that, we, um, um, that we should start thinking about um, is is how our networks can help not just the network, but outside the network, the smarter buildings, right? Digital buildings, and how, it, how we can achieve our sustainability goals using the intelligence that we are getting from, uh, from, from the network, right? One thing maybe we didn't talk about, but as we look at, at the smarter buildings, uh, more digitized buildings, and 
the reliance on network is becoming more and more. And that means there's going to be a lot more data um, in the upper layers of the network as well. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the aggregation and core layers, we are, we have, um, we are seeing a common trend of new speeds where we are going from 10 gig to 25 gig and from 40 gig to 100 gig in the core. And so we have introduced multiple products recently on that and I would ask our customers to check out our latest one, which is the Catalyst 9500X 60L, where we have packed 60 ports in a one RU form factor. This is first in the industry. Um, it required a lot of innovations to pack 60 ports in one RU. Typically, you will only see 48 ports, mm -hmm. right? And so this is our uh, latest addition uh, in the Catalyst 9000 portfolio. Fantastic. Mohamed, well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you, everybody else, also for watching. Um, if you can find all the information that Mohamed mentioned, as well as everything from Cisco Live in the DevNet Zone at developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was awesome.